Good afternoon, fellow iStaters. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Thursday, March 19th, 2018, episode 43. As usual, you give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. And we'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, action, and yeah, maybe a little lulls, and we definitely have a little bit of lulls. We actually have two stories that are kind of lulzy. One is the lulls of the day, and one is kind of lulzy. And you can get show notes at istate.tv slash h043, which is linked in the video description. Today's show is titled, Tales of the Philly Soda Smugglers. On today's episode of Headlines You May Have Missed, Soda Black Markets, Robot Taxation, Afrin Falls, NRA Surrender Monkeys, and more. Please share this show. If you're watching live on Facebook, don't forget to stay tuned in because I will respond to comments after the YouTube part of, show, of the show is over. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here are your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Philly soda tax leads to creation of black market. So sometimes we who dare dream of alternative governance to the coercive enterprise model, we like to speculate as to whether it's a good or bad thing when the state passes a new round of more controlling law aimed at the market. Now, that might seem contradictory to you guys listening to speculate that bad laws can produce good liberty-building results, but that's actually the case in Philadelphia. So the new Puritans of the progressive state left determined that uh, people were, well, they were too fat and something had to be done. And, well, of course, it's soda. Soda is to blame, so they got to do something about that. So they came up with a win-win situation. What they did was they, they taxed soda. I mean, this is brilliant, right? You tax soda, what happens? You raise the price of soda, and then, well you know, less people are going to buy the soda because, you know, it costs more, so not as many people are going to buy the soda. And then you also get revenue that you can use to pay for yourself and for your political allies so you can continue to hold on to the petty power that you have. Well, that was the plan, but something happened on the way to that perfect win-win fantasy, and that something is reality. Reality smacked the new Puritan square in the mouse. Mouth. Mouse. You know what? They do have a mousy mouth. Let's be honest. New Puritans do have mousy mouths. So let's say mouse. Swear, square in the mouse in the form of the black market, or as I like to call it, liberty market. So what people are doing is, surprise, surprise, they're buying soda outside of Philly and... Other people are actually buying soda outside of Philly, Philly, and they're bringing it into the city, and they're becoming soda smugglers. Just take that in. Soda smuggler is a thing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Soda smuggler. You can aspire someday to becoming a soda smuggler. You had moonshiners, and you had moonshine runners. Now you got soda smugglers. And you know, the Kennedys, they got rich being moonshiners. I can't wait to see what the next political royal family is going to be that emerges from the great era of soda smuggling in Philadelphia. I might be a bit hyperbolic, but uh, in case you're new to the show, that's, that's not an unusual thing. So this is from Reason.com. Philadelphia soda tax has produced a peculiar but predictable outcome, a thriving, they say black market, I'm going to say liberty market in soda imports. On March 1st, Major Kip, Jim Kenny released Major <laughs> Mayor Jim Kenny. He thinks he's a major or a general or some sort of authoritarian twat waddle. Could you say twat waddle on TV? 
Well, this isn't real TV, so I can say twat waddle. But I probably just demonetized my YouTube video, but that's okay. Uh, he released a budget proposal that cut revenue projections for the city's 1.5 cents tax on soda from an originally estimated 92 million to 78 million, a drop of nearly 15 percent. Danny Price, the secretary treasurer of Teamsters Local 830, which represents soda bottlers and delivery drivers, they're they're not happy, by the way, attributes a good chunk of that lost revenue to black marketers Kate Car carting in soda from untaxed jurisdictions. People are going out of Philadelphia to Delaware, New Jersey, and the surrounding counties, and they're bringing back soda, Price tells Reason, adding that he and his union's members spot vans loaded with soda coming into the city every day. The soda is then sold to local businesses looking to skirt the city's tax. Uh, the result, says Price, is less money for the city and less work for his union's members. Our delivery drivers middle an area, and that's the area. If people are buying on the black market, a guy's loose, bada boom, bada bing. You know, you put a leash around my neck, and you know, my problem isn't that you put a leash around my neck. My problem is those guys over there. You know, they found the way around the leash. That ain't cool, man. That ain't cool at all. So, you know, rather than going to Philadelphia, you know, the mayor, Mayor Keeney, or whatever the freak is, freaking twat waddle name is, I'm going to complain about the people that are getting away with escaping the tyranny of the state. Yay! Yeah. I don't know if I was interviewing this guy. I might have entered this interview earlier and, you know, then planned and said, wow, wow, you're a twat waddle too. Bye, Felicia. Let's go to the next story. I, I probably spent way too long on this story. A tax on robot labor could be in the works. Oh, from one tax to the next. Well, and you know what? Just like the last tax, this tax is designed for social engineering purposes as well as revenue generating purposes. So in a bid to control the natural emergence of a new reality, central planners are already trying to figure out fair ways to tax robots for their labor. And since robots can't pay tax bills, yet, the onus will fall on the robot owners. And since robot owners don't work, plan, invest, or design for free, the cost of that robot labor will be passed on to the person who is paying for the product or service the robot worker helps create. And the article in mybiz.com will give you some ostensible reasons to justify taxing robots, such as preventing robots from becoming so less expensive than humans that they cause these humans to lose their jobs. And in reality, folks, the bottom line is that... Uh, a scheme to tax robot labor is really, it's simply an attempt by central planners to control the emergence of new realities that they can't imagine will produce good results. Oh my gosh, I can't predict what's, you know what, it's going to be bad. We, we got we to gotta, we gotta tax it. You know, we, we got to guarantee the outcome that we want in the present reality that we understand, which we don't really understand, but we pretend that we do. Because if people really understood the, the, the significant lack of understanding that we actually have for today's current reality, they would leave our, our fiefdoms in droves. And we can't have that because if they leave our fiefdoms in droves, then, you know, who will, who will create... Uh, who will create uh, soda smugglers? Really? I mean, who will create soda smugglers if, if you don't rely on us? They imagine that they have the capacity to predict all of the new opportunities that could be created if you simply allow robot labor to emerge the way the market will naturally find them useful within the boundaries of the only true identifier of an authentic market the price someone is willing to pay for an end product or service compared to the price it costs to create that end product or service. And I guess, I guess the one question I have is this. If you believe in no taxation without representation, will robots be given the right to vote as well? I, for one, hope so. And it's, it really is the only decent thing to do. And God knows... Robots voting can't do any worse than what people already have. And 
any proof of that. Just just look at our last two presidents, current and last president, as, as examples of that. Kurds flee Afrin, Turk Reich enters city center. So in what appears to be a strategic retreat, the Kurds have abandoned Afrin to the Turk Reich, and it appears the Kurds intend on switching strategies to fight a guerrilla war. And it looks like it's a war that they intend on fighting within the Turk Reich itself. And trust me, we'll be covering that uh, in, in future stories probably this week. And this is from Reuters. Turkish forces and Syrian allies. Reuters, you suck. First of all, it's Turk Reich forces. And second of all, it's ISIS and other Islamo-fascist extremists chop your head off for not being the right Muslim forces drive Kurds from Afrin. But if you want to go ahead and sanitize what we're really talking about, you go right ahead, Reuters. Turkish forces, Turk Reich forces, and their Syrian rebel allies, their uh, their their be their their Islamo fascist beheaders, swept into the northwest west, northwestern Syrian town of Afrin on Sunday, raising their flags in the town center while they presumed with their raping and pillaging and plundering of anybody that was left behind, and declaring full control after an eight-week campaign to drive out Kurdish YPG forces. A spokesman for the rebel fighters, that is the beheading Islamo-fascist extremists, uh, I mean, they're even worse than twat waddles. They're like, I don't even know. I have to think about something worse than twat waddle. If you can think of something worse than twat waddle, you let me know. And uh, put it in the comments on Facebook, or if you're watching on YouTube, enter it in the comments there. Uh, g g give me a phrase to use for these uh, beheading Islamo-fascist fools. Uh, and they said they entered Afrin before dawn, meeting no resistance. A war monitor of the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said pockets of YPG fighters defied orders to withdraw, but Turkish fighters were in control. Sad, sad day. I think it happened. It really it happened yesterday. The sad day, the the fall of Afrin, which I kind of I don't blame I don't blame him for giving up Afrin and and turning to a new strategy. And we'll 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 talk more about this in in future stories, I'm sure, including just how the Turk Reich and its uh, beheading fools uh, accomplished the deed. NRA buckles again, backs gun violence restraining order. Now this. This is a story that I'm going to cover in a lot more detail tonight on Is Daily Monday. So I'm just going to go over the little article blurb part of this story. I wrote a whole thing up on this, and, and I'll go into that tonight on Is Daily Monday, which is on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And a link to the page, of course, is in the video description for both the Facebook and YouTube version of this show. And if you're listening then you know, go to iStake.tv and find the link there. The NRA makes a wide. This is from the National Review. Just, 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 just take out this. Just, just check out this headline. This, this will make the blood shoot out of your eyes. The NRA makes a wise, principled decision to support gun violence restraining order. And this is by David French. And again, tonight you can listen to my response to this tool. On Wednesday, the executive director of the NRA's Institute for Legislative Action took to NRA TV with a critical announcement. The NRA called on Congress to provide funding for states to adopt so-called risk protection orders, another term for the gun violence restraining order, the GVRO, that this tool David French discussed in a piece shortly after the Parkland School Massacre. And gun violence restraining order is a remarkab remarkably simple, right, and precisely target, right, remedy for two forms of gun violence, mass shootings and suicide. As Chris, Co Chris Cox explains, it allows a defined group of people, usually family members, school principals, employers, to petition a local court for an order temporarily removing guns from a person who's made statements or exhibited behaviors indicating they're a threat to themselves or others. And I just want to make a note out there of the image and that is a t-shirt as well in the article i linked to the t-shirt that sold on the agora.threadless.com i'd rather face the danger of a madman with a gun than empower the state to define what a madman is and that's that's all i'll say in response to this tool for right now but join us tonight and you'll get 
a lot more. High Tech Meeks Dining with seven foods of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Lowell's of the day. The future of food involves 3D printing, labs, bugs, algae, and more. And here's a look at uh, a look at the future of foods from Digital Trends. Uh, as as high tech foods promise to become a regular part of your eating diet, I'm just going to name a name name some of these here. Uh, we have lab grown meat called Mem there's Memphis Meats, which is uh, growing uh, growing meat in labs, uh, and then there's seafood made from algae, so you can have uh, shrimp, which is really algae and lobster which is really algae and they're made from specially engineered red algae by the san francisco biotech startup new wave foods there's bleedable veg veggie burgers so these are are veggie burgers that bleed and are made by the startup impossible foods then there's jelly chip jellyfish chip and i guess it's chips made out of jellyfish i don't know what they taste like do they taste like actual potato chips or what i don't know but anyway they're there and then there's grub there's grubs there's insects there's like but people have been eating insects for a while but apparently uh they're they're like uh they're more high-tech grubs i don't get it and then uh finally we have well no we have a couple more here we have a nice glass of algae that's right you can you can eat uh a nice lukewarm mug of soupy, genetically engineered algae, and finally, 3D printed food. And that's right, you can, you can. Uh, there are a number of uh, 3D food printers available, such as the Chef Jet from 3D Systems, which crystallizes thin layers of fine grained sugar into different sh shapes, or pasta maker Barilla's 3D printer, which creates noodles using water and uh, semolina flour and there you go that was your moment of lulls and now i don't know if i'm hungry though <laughs> maybe i am i don't know I'll, I'll try that bleeding veggie burger china uses social credit to determine if you can use public transportation china has become the world's leader in dystopian tech deploying artificial intelligence to enable its police state enforcers to more effectively target and eliminate dissent and it has a whole nation as a police state laboratory in dystopian tech, the Uyghurs. It is now utilizing your social media presence to determine your, quote, social credit. And if you score too low, you begin losing access to certain services. And here, the Chinese government has announced that people with low social credit won't be able to ride on trains or fly on planes. Just... Just a heartwarming story, and that there's there's more from Reuters, but you can you can read that in the show notes. Humans and Denisovan hominins commingled DNA shows. Boy, that was a that was tough. I I don't know the word Denisovan. It's it's hard. And then couple that with Denisovan and then hominin, and you put it together, and you got to say Denisovan hominin. This is like a little bit beyond or above my pay grade. I'm not paid that high to pronounce such fancy words in close proximity to one another, but I managed I managed to pull it off. I'm going to have to give myself a raise for that. I'm going to give myself a raise. Humans didn't just get it on with Neanderthals, it seems. Full disclosure, by the way, I am a proud member of the Neanderthal community with 4% uh, of my DNA being from that noble race of hominins. And, you know, I, I of course, realize that, you know, we, we, are, we call ourselves the OP, the original people. I mean, Neanderthals, it's, it's, it's kind of actual, literally racist, like literally racist, because Neanderthal is actually a separate race from humans. So it's racist. We are the original people. But never mind. I don't, I don't want to diverge too much. We're running out of time. In addition to Neanderthals, it now seems that humans have also mated with another hominin, the Denisovans. Apparently, humans co-mingled with the ancient race on at least two separate occasions, and this is from znews.india.com. Our ancestors not only mated with Neanderthals, but also with the Denisovans. In a paper published on uh, this past Thursday in the journal Cell, scientists at the University of Washington showed that more than 50,000 years ago, the now extinct subspecies of human Denisovans lived in Asia and apparently coexisted with modern humans. And we got it on. We got it on, not just in Australia. Well, apparently in Australia, but in other places as well. 
Tennessee makes $100,000 from fining people for braiding hair. Yay, revenues! Without the government, who would force us to procure an expensive license just to braid hair and fine us if we don't do it? Apparently, the government of Tennessee thought it would be a great idea, uh, really a great source of revenue, and boy, they weren't wrong. The state has collected $100,000 in fines so far, $16,000 from one person alone, Fatou Dayouf. So, hey, hey, wait, hey, Fatou, you know, Way to contribute to the uh, state. I feel for you, though. I know I know you did it under duress. New Zealand launches first ever flying taxi service. Christchurch, New Zealand has become the home for the world's first operational flying taxi service. While other places around the world are still in, prepar in the preparation phase of testing similar operations, Christchurch has launched a test service. The New York Times ran a prominent story last week about flying taxis being developed in New Zealand. A company called Kitty Hawk is reportedly testing a new kind of fully electric self-piloting piloting flying taxi. And that story is from stuff.co.nz. 3D printed homes help families in need in El Salvador. A nonprofit company comes together with a 3D printed home company to build homes for families in need in El Salvador. They are working on creating a model 3D printed home for $4,000. The name of the nonprofit is New Story. The name of the 3D printed home company is Icon, a Texas based company. And finally, stars deliver drugs to cells at the nanoscale. Nanoparticles in the shape of stars have been designed to enter into specific cells of the body. Only after entering the cells do these star shaped nanoparticles deliver their payload. Loads therapeutic medicines. And that's it. That's it. I did it. I did it, ladies and gentlemen. I got through all 10 stories. I know I spent way too much time on the first two stories, but that is going to happen. As it is, that's all we have today for headlines you may have missed. If you'd like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for March 19th, 2018. Or check out the link to the show notes page in the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. Or go to the description for both the Facebook live stream and the YouTube video. I already said that. I, 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 you know, the last show, I also repeated that. I'm going to have to do something to bust that up so I know not to repeat that again because that sucks. Or go to iState.tv slash H043. And you can also find our audio podcast show on iTunes and Stitcher by searching for iState. And finally, if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the opening of the show and you also miss the very end, which you can only hear if you watch live on my personal Facebook page, Paul Gordon. Look for the guy with the AR-15, the one that was lost in a tragic boating accident. And don't forget to join me tonight on Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Liberty Principle, Fe Liberty Principle Facebook page. The page is linked in the video description. Tonight's show is entitled... How to be a surrender monkey in one easy NRA step. And yes, you're, we're going to cover in more detail the story of the NRA saying, you know, Disha, Disha, restraining order, gun seizure things are a good idea. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying, have a great rest of your day. Fellow I-Staters.